Happy New Year, everybody. Yes, it's another show, another great New Year of Aussie Tech Eds. How you all been? Hope you had a great Christmas and a great New Year. It's been, look, one of the longest breaks that we've had uh, in the in the last 13 years of doing the show. I think it's been about a month since we've been on. So, uh, look, we were, we were just fiddling and farting around before the show. I'd forgotten what to do. I was all up and up and down. I'd forgotten my procedure and everything. But uh, we're, hopefully we're back on track and uh, we're right to go now. Uh, we are coming live through the Facebook. So I've, because uh, no Jordan this week, so he normally does the Facebook live. He's got the MBN. But uh, I've, with the latest update of the Wirecast, it allowed me to reduce the quality of the Facebook stream. So hopefully by doing that, it will give us a faster or a lower bandwidth, a lower a lower congestion on the pipes up to the Facebook server, if you will. So uh, look, Look, I'll watch it back later on and see see what the quality is like. But if if you're in the Facebook feed now, just let us know if it's a it's a go or a no go. And um, if it's a no go, well, bad luck. <laughs> That's probably all you're gonna get. Uh, or you just have to watch it on the YouTube. But all right, yeah. So thanks for joining us. And uh, you, we are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au. It's a drag and drop website builder, free for the business and pro plans. But look, seriously, you're probably better off just trying to learn a bit of WordPress following a, a bouncing ball YouTube video. Uh, servers operate on SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates, Aussie support, domain registration, and all the other good stuff that comes with uh, web hosting businesses. And we are also brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. You can register your company fast, easy, and direct with assets. All documents are provided and the documents are held in your account for download at any time later on. So if they tell me you get a uh, constitution, you get share, minutes of uh, meeting, shareholders, uh, whatevers and everything else that goes with creating the company. And uh, you're able to you know keep them in your account. If you lose them two years down the track, you can pop back into uh, startnewcompany.com.au, go to your account, download them all again. Uh, if you're an accountant or other professional, you're also able to brand all your documents with your company name. So that's pretty good for a bit of branding for the for the professionals out there, for your clients. Uh, and uh, coming soon, ABN, tax file numbers and trusts. So uh, yeah, watch that space, startnewcompany.com.au. Now, uh, look, we uh, look. I'll, I'm going to introduce Joe. It's about, I can hear him clanging around there in the background and I'll, I'll go through the rest of my spiel in a sec. But how you going, Joe? Good, thanks, Glenn. How, how are you going? Yeah, good, thanks. Happy New Year to you, and hope you had a good break in Christmas. Yes, yeah, so it was pretty busy, a uh, pretty busy break. Did a few things, went down to Melbourne, um, and then went um, to Kiama. so I spent a few days away. Right, excellent. Kiama, what's that? That's the blowhole. The Kiama yeah, blowhole. Yeah, that that's right, yeah. Yeah, I haven't been down that way for years, <laughs> but I do remember the blowhole. Um, yeah, so look, I'll just to go through the rest of my little spiel that I do, and you, you guys probably know it off by heart better than I do, but you can find us on the facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds and the youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds. The website is at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast, and also the Aussie Tech Radio, which is a, a an amalgamation of Australian tech podcasts, and they're played back-to-back, wall-to-wall, 24-7 uh, throughout the week. Uh, if you've got a tech podcast, you'd like to join the queue uh, of that of that round and round she goes service, then send me an email and I'll just load you in each time you put a new episode out if it's new within the previous week. So new shows go up every Friday. So that means that each Friday, there's no, you know, you're not going to come across a show that's like six months old because uh, most of the shows that do deal with tech, uh, it's all tech news and this sort of stuff and even hardware tech, you know, like two weeks down the track, it's, it's old hat, it's out gone it's gone you know like intel they operate on quarters everyone's bringing out new chips every quarter so you don't want the news too old and you won't get it there on the aussie tech radio uh you can get the other shows if you enter into the max of the uh aussie max zone they've just come back too this week uh so that's uh a good stuff there and my tech opinion they haven't come back yet they're still on holidays eh, shane and uh phil so about time you uh put the christmas cheer down put the beers the, the wines down and get us another tech opinion please all right. Now, what else have we got going on? Um, not much, except for a whole bunch of stories. Now, uh, look, I wanted to start with Joe's pulled out some stories or some uh, interesting little things that he thought uh, that, he, that we wanted to talk about from the CES uh, 2019. Now, um, now, Joe, what, what can you tell us about the CES? Can you tell us look, what that yeah, is? Yeah, CES was a big thing this year, uh, 2019. It was... Uh, a lot of um, new technologies come out, um, the obvious phones and televisions and things like that. 
but I've, I've come across a couple of interesting little um, things that they've got there. One uh, called the human scale line of sit, sa uh, sit and stand desks. Right. It's basically a, a smart office tech made easier to clean and organize in workspace. It's basically like a, a stand up desk that they've got there. That's going to become really big this year. Mm. Um, so that's um, you know, for places that are like sitting down all the time and you stand up. Yeah, like yeah. me. Yeah. Now, I'm, you can see that though. if you're on the uh, YouTube, you'll be able to see the picture of one. I think that in Australia, I think we've got these very desks. Is that how you pronounce it? I'm not sure. The very desk. So I'm not sure what the difference here would be between the two. Um, but I do know. Well, this one this one here looks like it's got, um, rather than the desk moving up and down, I think it looks like it's got like a keyboard under the thing that moves up and down and right. the move up and down rather than the whole desk i know i looked into them at one stage because like you know like you know do, do, dealing with computers like you do sit and you do sit for the majority of the day and look i'm starting to get sick of it to be honest you know like you want to be trying to move around a bit i know look, leo if you ever watch the leo show, leo the port the twitch shows he used to have a little blow up one of those exercise balls he used to sit on before he sat on and popped at one time that was quite funny but look, these very desks they, they're or whatever these the human scale sit stand desks when i looked at them they were pretty expensive um like 600 odd uh you can get motorized ones you can get manual ones that lift up and down but uh the good thing here i noticed with that picture joe is that it's got a double monitor and i like that yeah, double monitor is always, always handy. I've actually got three in my, in my place at the moment. So uh, I, I guess you could, I wonder if you could put three on the desk. I don't know. You'd have, probably have to get another one of those little wacky do stands that they got going there. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like I like three on my desk at the moment. I was actually um, thinking um, that I've got like one 19-inch and one 22-inch and another 22-inch. And I'm thinking maybe I'd just convert the 19 inch into a 22 inch as well. Yeah, what do you have you ever operated one of those curved screens? I, no, I haven't had the chance to use one of those yet. Yeah, my wife had a go at one at where she works. They brought one in to trial it and she put her hand up to trial it and she loved it. She didn't want to go back. She, you know, had to had to hold it down while they replaced it <laughs> with, the, with the normal oh, two. Yeah. But she really liked it. Yeah, so they must be pretty good, but they're expensive too. But uh, yeah, so the desks they're good. And what was the what was was there anything special about them? Why they were coming out at the CES? Like, is it just something that um, we're just going to hear on the feed that Christopher's saying that I'm too loud. So I don't know if you can turn me down a bit, Glenn. Oh, I can I can turn it down there. How's that? See how that goes. You let us uh, let us hopefully know. Hopefully that's better for you there, Christopher. Let us know, Chris, if that's no good. Okay, yes. So um, the other thing that there's interesting there, and everyone's sort of seen them around, they called them the handle um, debut with a new line of smartphone cases um, that will reach retail stores later on in 2019. It's got like a, a grip that features uh, that lays flat when it's not in use. I mean, you've, you've probably seen them before. They're like um, the, the ones they have at the moment. They're like the um you put a ring and you've got to put your finger through it and you hold it like that right whereas this one here is a bit different this one here's got like a a flat section that you sort of stick your fingers through um and you hold your phone that way oh yes so, so that's a new sort of case that's coming out later on in in the year i'm just trying to get how do we get oh okay i'm, I'm getting the hang of these pictures here joe i'm going to try and get a picture of that case for the people on the on the is that it there is that the one? Oh, yeah, that's... the one that's in the notes there. It's the black one. Yeah. Oh, that's is that the that's the conference for remote assistance. Yeah, but I can't pull the note picture up. That's the only thing. I've got to go through the the website. Oh, there it is. That thing. That's the one you're talking about. Is that it, Joe? I, I don't know what you're putting up. Oh, okay. Can't you see that? On the I can now. Yeah, it'll be the next one across. I think. No, it's that one. You're on the. Are you watching on the Facebook or are you watching on the Zoom? On the Facebook. Oh yeah, that's that's why you're lagged. You got to watch on the Zoom. That one there. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. Can you watch it on the Zoom, Joe? It's it's instant. I can't because I've, I can see two pictures of me. Still. Yeah. It really bores it up this time. Right. <laughs> Um, okay, I don't know it's why that It's just little, little things we, we little have to get sorted out by the, by the next one anyway. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, you just can... I'll, I'll, uh, I'll um, put up with your uh, laggingness then and I'll, I'll show you more compassion. Uh, all right, so that's those ones. Yeah, so, so the other thing they have there, um, which is new, it's a, a parcel guard. Um, apparently, it's a, a Wi-Fi connected ma- um, smart mailbox. And it's got like an IP motion activated camera. Right. That, that checks out people who are tamper with it or it's got some sort of an alarm. People go there. It gives you like a email notification of some sort that um, when you have mail there. And I don't know whether, again, you, you can't see the picture, but it's I could sort of relate it to if anyone's got those parcel posts. Yeah. Down at the, uh, you get them some of the service stations and places like that where there's a parcel post and it's all connected via the internet, via post. Right. Um, and you get notification when you've got mail in there and you just hey, go right. and you scan your phone. And, yeah, okay. And it's it's a, like a mini one, but for the office. Yeah, right. Okay. So it seems like a, a quite a varying of things that have come out this year. Like normally it's just all TVs and, and video cameras and phones and all this, but it looks like there's... Yeah, that's right. And, and that's why I've, I've decided to have a look at some of these others, other things because, um, you know, generally CES does talk about TVs and smartphones, but I had a look at some of these others, which, which you know, you don't always hear about. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Sorry. So I was just... Uh... A bit of Lou, I just fixed up your video. Um, there you are, I can see you now. Yeah, hey, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's good. The, so that's the the parcel. And what else have they got? Did you did you like? There's a there's a like a, a mini three D printer there, um, and it uses some sort of CYM ink technology. Um, it's got like colours, uh, different colours, and it's a compact wireless printer, um, and it prints in three D. Right. Uh, it comes with the, with the software and all the gallery with all the different type of designs that you can build. Um, and it also is available with an upgraded uh, laser engraving tool or a module that you can load onto this device so you can engrave things as well with it. Yeah, right. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So um, this particular one has um, – it comes in like – 5.1 by 5.1 inch by 5.1 inch, so r- roughly 13 centimeters by 13 centimeters by 13 centimeters. Yeah. Um, to print, you know, like 3D print little things. Yeah, but the, right. the main thing about it is it, it, it comes in multi colors. Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty good. That's good. So Wallace Print offers millions of color options. So that's better than the ones you buy down at uh, Audi, where you you know you got to what might get three colors. Yeah, absolutely. So it's 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 good. It's a good little device. I mean, I found that interesting. I've mm. always wanted to get myself a three D printer. Do they? I, I don't know what the price of these are, though. I mean, they'd say that they'd be fairly expensive. I was going to say, I think you, they pretty much everything at the CES type events. They're just all uh, uh, like prototypes. Um, not mu- would you, would you say they're most of them are like prototype sort of stages of their life cycle, or are they are they ready to hit the the market? Uh, some things are yes, and 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 some things are available um, right right at the moment that they're um, they're having the show, and and there's also others that are released la- later on. I mean, some of them are just like a demonstrations for like the the concept of the ideas. Mm. Yeah. So of, um, well, you know, I think last year we were talking about those. The I'm not sure what brand it was, but the the foldable. TVs or the wrap or the roll up TVs. Apparently, they're coming out this year. So that's be... right. Yeah, I think I spoke about that um, on one of the previous podcasts. Mm. Yeah, so that should be good. I can't wait for those. Yes. Uh, I think LG from memory makes yeah. that one. Yeah, it must be because that's what I had in my mind. So you're probably right. And uh, what's the last one you you that? Yeah, look, the other one I found is really cool as well. Um, not not that you think about it much, but um, it's called a phone soap. Um, UV sta- sanitizer. So it's basically, um, you, you know, they say here that you can't wash your phone, but you can sanitize it with this phone soap thingo. Yeah, right. right. So basically, it's a 
It sanitizes and neutralizes the bacteria on your phone, and it also allows you to charge it, which is pretty cool. I mean, you just put your phone in there and it charges your phone, but at the same time, it sets, uh, sanitizes it and saturates it and neutralizes the bacteria. <laughs> yeah, I but wonder. This- I wonder if it's a uh, if it's does it fit like is it a fit all device one size fits all or have you got? A- I, would, I would say it doesn't actually. Specific- it doesn't this doesn't actually say, but I would say it would be. Yeah, it looks like so. Just to try and describe that to you guys on the audio, it's like a, a say soap size or soap in look. It's probably a bit bigger, but obviously because it's got to encase your phone, so your phone sits inside it, and it looks like it might have they be like ultraviolet tubes or some sort of lighting mechanism that I, I guess when it lights up, it just kills the bacteria and so forth. Yeah, think, think UV. Of it, uh, yeah, UV sanitizer. Yeah, think of it like a, you know when you go into the sun baking salons and you've got those little things that you go in. Yeah, think of it something like that, but it's just the size of a phone, and um, you stick your phone in there, and it sanitizes your phone and it deep, uh, gets rid of all the bacteria. Mm. And, uh, and look, I'm guessing it's got a, a lead out there. You can, if you look closely, it's got like a little slot that you can plug your lead in to uh, to charge it. Right. So is sanitising your phone something you're keen on? Oh, look, I don't know. I just wipe it, you know, with the... <laughs> I actually use sunglasses, you know, the sunglasses um, cloth. Yep. Oh, no, I, I, don't, I don't um I don't sanitise my phone at all. The, my wife comes along every now and then and says, I just cleaned your phone. I went, oh, okay, thanks. I don't really care. I think you pick up a lot of... If you're going to pick up germs, you pick up door handles and stuff, but no, I don't know, I suppose you put them near your head, don't you? Yeah, well, it's just, just another one of those interesting things to know about, you know, yeah. you, you can tell, um, you know, talk about... Um, will, it, will, it, will it become popular? I don't know. Mm. But, you know. It might be. In case you live in a bubble, this one's for you. Uh, remember the bubble boy. That's the reference to the bubble boy. Now... That's uh, that's a bit of a wrap up of the CES. So thanks, uh, Joe. Now, well, we, I'll get back to some of uh, say other stories that have been happening in the past week. Uh, look, there's a story here that, that first came up today that I saw was from Kogan. Uh, now, a poor the heading is poor iPhone demand and the GST drags down Kogan. So revenue from the global brands category, which includes premium third party products like Apple, Samsung have apparently dropped 46.7% in their first half of 2019. So this is Kogan has the sales have dropped 46.7%. Now he's blamed the he's blamed the uh, the downturn on the introduction of the GST laws, the new laws that came in last July where it required that retailers were to charge the GST on imported goods worth less than $1000. And I noticed that when I bought a couple of things over the you know last twelve months or eighteen months from Kogan, yeah, there was no GST, and I wondered to myself, uh, is that right? Do I think that is right? Uh, probably not. I think it's probably you know although it would cost you more, uh, but I think you know everyone else has got to suck it up. So I think he should be able to. He should have to charge it and then cut his cost somewhere else. Uh, so it's not just the added tax that's cut into his revenue, apparently. It's uh, the number of foreign websites that uh, sell into the into the Australian market who are actively avoiding GST, he said. Uh, so they're claiming he's, he's claiming that GST avoidance has become widespread in Australia and was eroding his company's gross margin. I'm sort of a bit like uh, boo hoo <laughs> because I don't you know I don't know um, yeah you know, he's doing all right and he's having a bit of a cry at the same time i think i think you know if you, if you have a struggling retailer i think you could probably have a you know i'd be more sympathetic to it but uh look taxes at the end of the day tax is good for the country uh it helps to build roads and send the pollies off on junkets and holidays and and education tours and all that sort of stuff you know all the good stuff but at the end of the day you know the tax is good for the country uh another thing another comment i would have is you know buying from a foreign website you know, where you might be GST free, you might find it a little bit cheaper, but then you lose your customer rights or your consumer rights. Um, you know, like you don't get maybe the return warranty or the return procedure is hard or the warranty is hard because you've bought it from some website that operates out of, uh, you know, Timbuktu over in Somalia or something. Uh, and plus also, the another reason why I think his sales could be falling is, from my experience, is his return policy is rubbish. I think it's a load of crap. Like you're unable to talk to them. You've got to email them, and then it takes them two days to get back to you. 
I just don't think that's right at all. So I think there's probably more than more than the GST that he's uh, he should be crying about. But uh, but what do you think, Joe? You a Kogan? You a Kogan supporter? You buy from him? I have used Kogan in the past, and I do know that you have had problems in the past. But I haven't had any of the problems that you've had. Mm. They've always been pretty good with me. Yeah, but have you had any items that have broken though, and and you needed warranties? Not via Kogan. The only thing I can tell you is that. I did buy my G3 via my LG G3 back in the day um, via the Kogan website because it was a lot cheaper. Mm. And I did have an issue with um, the mail system, something wrong with the mail. Um, it wouldn't collect mail properly or something to do with the right. software. And and they actually um, they actually helped me with... Um, with with the whole heap of you know sending they had to go through their customer service was not bad i mean i i, I can't complain i know that you've had um different experiences but my, my one was, was all right mm. yeah i've had about three products in a row which were, were crazy so uh, yeah i've sort of it's it's uh it's turned me off there but anyway that's uh you know that's just personal yeah chris chris experience. was saying that um kogan's bu- bubble has burst you know like mm. I, I have to agree with him there's just so many other websites out there at the moment. You know, think of, you know, Be- uh, Gear Best and um, Wish and, and things like that. Sure, yeah. you have to wait a little bit longer to get your, your product, but, you know, it's cheaper and but, it's the same. But are you hesitant at all when you buy from these third – like how, how well known does the site have to be? Like I think Wish is pretty well known. Uh, they're probably not doing the GST. I don't think I don't think they're an Australian site. I think they they're overseas. But but you know like you know you, you do your search for your you get your little price bots in your your Google results come through and like you know, might have a say a washing machine that could be a couple of hundred bucks cheaper on the net. Uh, I think one I've looked up prices of things like that from appliances dot com dot au or appliances Australia or something. It sounds it sounds like a big joint and they've been around for a while. But geez, are you are you really? I I just find I struggle to be able to throw down say fifteen hundred dollars and hope that it comes. You know? Well, that's right. I mean, if you if you if you have that sort of a feeling, then I would say don't don't do it. Um, when I buy, I buy from you know Bang Bang Good. I buy from Wish. I buy from Gear Best. Um, mm. I buy from all these um, these uh, selling sites and. I buy with the uh, the mind, with the mind thought of um, if it doesn't come or if I don't get it, am I okay with that? Yeah. And um, or, if it, or as soon as I get it, is if it's the wrong one or if it's faulty, am I okay with losing whatever money I've spent on it? Mm. Yeah. Uh, and and that's the mindset I put myself into when I buy from these places. Yeah. Um, sure. If I'm going to spend fifteen hundred bucks, I wouldn't. Uh, I'd rather go down to a local retailer and, and spend fifteen hundred bucks. Um, having said that, I'm talking about maybe ten years. Ten years or so, I bought a um, uh, a Canon camera. Uh, the the very one of the first digital SLR cameras with the flip out lid. I think it's called the sixty D. Right. Yep. Um, and um, at the time. A camera store here in Sydney wanted something like eighteen hundred and fifty dollars, and I thought, "Oh, geez, it's a lot of money to spend over on, on, online." Um, so I decided that I'd look online, and then once I looked online, I found a company called um, uh, something Japan, J- Price Japan, or something like that. Right. Yeah. So what, what this company here does, this website in Japan, what this does is they have like a like a, a website. And then they show you the goods that they sell or that, that they can get in contact with. Like, for example, they have suppliers for cameras, Canon cameras, um, and they can then go to their shops that are in their vicinity of the area, buy it for you and send it out to you. Right. Okay. Right. So, and, and um, I, I took a risk because... I actually did get the camera for thirteen hundred and fifty dollars rather than eighteen hundred and fifty. So it was a five hundred dollars saving. Yeah, that's that's all right. And the camera worked all right. Yeah, but it worked out fine for me. You know, it, it, it the comp the and then after it worked out fine. That's it. The one the one that's on the uh, the, the live feed at the moment, the Price Japan. I think that's, that's the one. Price and Japan. then I went ahead and 
um, I bought a Panasonic, um, uh, what is it, projector lens. Yeah. Right. Here in Australia, those projector lenses were something like $550 um, for a projector lens for my projector. And on that side, it was only $150. Yeah, that's a good saving. Yeah. That's... So, I mean, I think they did dead. take some risks, but when it comes to these other ones, um, yeah, I guess it all depends on how you feel and how desperate you are. I mean, you, if you're only saving a few dollars, then, you know, you don't care if you lose it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure about Price Japan. I, I I know there was a picture of it there, but you keep typing in the domain and you get other crazy stuff like like knitting and stuff. <laughs> so go figure that one. But um, but yeah, so, all right. So uh, what else? Oh, look at that, PriceJapan.com. I just seem to come up. It's, this, this domain is for sale. So they must have gone out of business. Yeah, probably selling stuff too cheap. That's what... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, look, it's been quite a few years since I bought from there, but that was the one that I and and I'm guessing that at places like AliExpress, Alibaba, um, there's another one called um, Asian Sources, I think. Right. Uh, on something called something there's like heaps that. Of them. I think I suppose you just you, you buy something small, test the waters, and and you gradually increase and see how they go. But look, um, talk about paying more for stuff or paying less and whatever. Uh, Look, we both picked this story up uh, for this week's uh, show. The Google G Suite uh, has is hiking the prices. Did you want to have that's a right. go yeah, with that? That's right. I, I was going to go with the G Suite. I don't know if some listeners might remember going back um, a, f- a few months when I was debating what sort of mail program to use um, because I didn't want to pay for the G Suite. Yeah, yes. And uh, so the G Suite, I think, as you know, it started off, I can remember in the early days when it first started, I think the, the first five accounts were free and then you paid $5 a month per seat. Uh, but now that's going up and it's going up to be more expensive than the Office 365's basic package. Uh, so on the 2nd of April, which is not too far away, the cost of the G Suite basic, uh, which is the introductory tier, and the business immediate tier, they're both going up 20%. So in US dollars, that'll take the the uh, base from $5 to $6. And so, you know, obviously, if when you extrapolate that out for over the year, you start to look at uh, $50 to $72. Uh, the G Suite business, which offers more enterprise-grade features, goes from $10 to $12 a month. Uh, among the upgrades, so you might be saying, what do we get for our money? Among the upgrades introduced over the last year has been an infusion of artificial intelligence into all tiers of the products and the release of an enterprise version of Google Voice and blah, 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 you know, goes on, bang, bang, bang. Um, I don't know. Is it is it worth the increase? Before you answer that, I'll tell you how many how many users they've got. And you might say, because you might be thinking to yourself, well, you know, Google spends a lot of time and effort and uh, into the, in the research and development phases of all their products, you know. So I guess, you know, they've got to be compensated. So why not it's only a, a dollar, two dollars a month increase uh, for one yeah, user? Look, if you're a heavy user of, of the G Suite, um, it, it's probably a good idea. It's probably worth it. I mean, it, it's, it says that they haven't had a, a price increase since about what, 2006 or something like that. Yeah, it's been a little while. Uh, um, I, I guess they're due for one, but even if, even if it is a couple of dollars. Mm. But so, because you know how much Google makes, well, just to, just to let you know how, they, how much they're going to make off the G Suite, uh, they have boasted that the G Suite users are 1.4 billion around the world, and that's across more than 4 million businesses. So they, Google revealed this in, the, in July at their Google cloud next 2018 conference so the figures would be probably pretty pretty stable you'd imagine uh yeah. so, so while comparing yeah. yeah g suite to the office 365 uh yeah the price increase will make google's product the more expensive option for many businesses uh look i remember looking into it the same as you joe i i, I tipped over to the microsoft side i thought it was a lot more professional a lot more professional looking and a lot more widely used uh, I think each of them have their own advantages and they also have their own negatives. But uh, at the end of the day, I think Microsoft has been, uh, is my pick there. So I'm happy I went there. You watch yeah, Microsoft big, increase now. Yep. 
Yeah, Pete says um, that it's still much cheaper than hosting your own mail server, and I have to agree with him on that. You know. Yeah, well, it depends what I mean. You mean by your own mail server like uh if if you if you're in a business then yeah your actual mail server uh like you know where you got to um physical hardware and that yes that would be quite expensive i mean when you when you look at things like you know the it would it, it comes with um virus protection backup um all that sort of stuff you got um storage i mean yeah look i know uh look i'm not sure i haven't gone right into what the g suite offers with their emails but i know like with microsoft there's a there's a lot of add-ons you know like you might want this advanced threat protection an extra two bucks a month you might want something else an extra couple of bucks a month you know and it can start to to all add up so may, maybe google includes more of that stuff i suppose still got to well you know, you know how you get the free gmail and it has to have a like a joe the gadget man at gmail.com for example yeah uh, well, when you have the G Suite, you, you can that that um, you have to pay and you get your own hosting email. For example, like in uh, Joe at JoeTheGadgetsMan dot com. Yes, that's right. Yeah, you can use you can put your own domain to it. Yeah, so that's the benefit in that, and I think that's what Pete's trying to say is you don't have to run your own server or host it anywhere else. Mm. It, it it implements and it sort of ties in with all the rest of the Google Suite if you're a Google user. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I love the Google Photos. Like I use the Google. I'm not, I'm not uh, bagging it too much because I, I, I like it. There's certain areas, but uh, yeah. Look, I, I think that the, I, I, know, I also like Microsoft. So, yeah, I'm, I'm actually pay for the Microsoft one. Well, actually, Microsoft is is making a comeback now, and we, we did talk about it. Yes. A few weeks ago, how Microsoft now wants to implement a version of uh, Chrome with mm. their browser. Well, I'll tell you. That's right, but I'll tell you something like something with the office uh, between the office and the Google G Suite stuff, is that look I looked at you know with the web hosting and all that sort of stuff, uh, I looked at reselling the the Office three six five and reselling the G Suite products, and I was sort of really didn't really care. I really looked into it. I didn't really you know I wanted to do one one or the other, and look, I, I I came down on the side of Microsoft because it's starting out into that that area of uh, you know that that space of selling the those tools that google before you become a reseller you had to have or you have to pay for at least a hundred uh seats a month right so you you have to hit the ground running at 100 seats a month well obviously if you're starting and just by a little little fella on the gold coast he's not i'm not going to have 100 seats a month and microsoft didn't have that restriction or didn't have that uh requirement to start like you could just start reselling their stuff from one so uh that and that's the reason why i went there so you know i'm uh i'll be thankful for microsoft and i'll be loyal to that for that reason i guess yeah no that's pretty good that one um all right joe what else have you is it my turn or what are we doing oh i'll bet i'll, 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 anyone. I'll go one because that was sort of i don't know but anyway we'll go, do this one quick uh, domino's pizza uh has been in the u.s has been defeated uh, in court over an app so some guy he's uh he was blind he, he took the the uh, Domino's to court because he couldn't operate the app correctly. Now, Domino's Pizza has been told its website and app must be made fully accessible to blind people after losing its case in the US. So he he uh, the guy that made the complaint said he struggled to change toppings and was unable to complete the pizza purchase using the company's iPhone app. So his case was initially dismissed in 2017 but was successful on appeal. So I guess... Now, now that's been successful, successful on appeal. Now, is that going to be a precedent being set for for future cases like this? Like, how much, how worried does the rest of the world's businesses have to be, or the rest of the US businesses, which and that'll flow on obviously to everywhere else as it does. But you know, does every every business in the US have to conform to say strict rules when it comes to now doing their coding up their website? So. The company's app and website lacked the labelling requirements for him to use the pizza builder facility uh, or to complete an order. He said he was unable to make use of discount vouchers. So he argued it put the company in breach of the Americas with Disabilities Act of 1990, which said it was unlawful for businesses to deny individuals with disabilities access to their goods and services unless the effort involved places them under an undue burden. So I don't know, you might uh, think of that what you will. 
But, uh, I mean, a lot of hassle when you could have just phoned it up, I think. Like, wouldn't you just phone it up? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't actually um, use much of Pizza Hut's... Um, or Domino's. At the moment, uh, Domino's or whatever. Is it Domino's or Pizza Hut? That's Pizza Domino's. Hut, oh, the picture? Oh, the picture might be... A, no, it's Domino's. It's Domino's. Uh, but, anyway, oh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, um, but like, it doesn't matter who it is, though. Like, now this this precedent hit now is that, well, hey, if, if your apps don't have the correct uh, alt tags or if they can't be easily used by someone with a, a site disability, well, does that mean that you're in breach of, a, say, some sort of code? And then you've got to be made to improve the app. Like you've got to spend another, you know, ten thousand dollars on tagging everything correctly, or or getting a whole new workflow, or or whatever. Like, I don't know. I think uh, sometimes, I don't know. I would have just phoned it through if I was this guy. Phone phoned it through, or uh, or, or look for somewhere else. Okay, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Phone it through, mate. Phone it through. All right. What else you got, Joe? Well, I've, I've got this thing here. Um, it's got the fully flexible smartphone. Um, well, you may have seen it. Um, it sort of wraps around against each other. LG again? No, well, LG coming up, right? But this is actually called FlexPay, F-L-E-X-P-A-I. Right. Yeah, and it's um, the world's first commercial foldable smartphone. Um, it has a combination uh, which can be used as a combination of a smartphone and a tablet. Oh, okay. Um, officially relaunched in October uh, in Beijing and is um, disrupting apparently the concept of smartphones. Um, apparently, the FlexiPay screen is virtually unbreakable and is extremely durable, passing tests where the screen can be bent over 200,000 times. Oh wow, two hundred thousand! Oh, yeah, they oh okay, they, yes. They must have done some sort of test because they reckon they can bend it backwards and forwards two hundred. Well, it obviously, it wouldn't be done man by by any man or you know mm. any person. Um, oh would, no, in China, machine, machine <laughs> testing. Yeah, that's that's the one you see there. Um, um, apparently, it's got um, fantastic color range, high contrast. It's it's got a wide angle and high resolution for outstanding picture quality. It's got this new optical film coating process with a dual curved uh, surface design. Now, if anyone's interested in seeing this, and um, I'm a follower of, of Linus on YouTube, um, if you go to his page and you'll see there is a, uh, a link there to this particular Flexi Power phone, and he, he actually has it in his hand and he demonstrates how it works and talks about it. So, um, yeah. Um, Glenn, I think you put the link in the notes later for anyone who wants to see it. Yes, yeah. There's there's uh, every story that we my stories that we talk about. There are links in yeah. the show notes for you to follow follow through if you wish. But uh, look, I think we did look at this last year as well, didn't we? Uh, this foldy iPady screen thing. Um, yeah, I, we may have talked about it. Yeah, but I'm not. I think it's only been released this October. So I now, wonder. I wonder though, with all its open and closes, like will it? Although it won't snap, but will it get creased? So if you do open it, we have two lines, or you know, like the fold lines down in the middle. Once it's open, yeah. Apparently, there. apparently, if you look at um, the the YouTube video that Linus puts out, he he, he does mention that. And what? apparently, it's not a fault of the design. There's a fault of the software. He reckons it's a software thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. He actually reckons that the two lines that you're talking about. Um, is more of a software issue rather than a hardware. You, sh you shouldn't be able to see any lines. Right. Um, and, and he's done some sort of a test um, with with it. Um, and he shows you how it does it, and it's, apparently it's it's uh, some sort of a software. So it probably can be fixed. Yeah, it looks pretty cool though. Like if it looks as good as that, that what's on yeah, the look, screen? On it, I, I don't know whether I myself would get one. Um, it's sort of mm, no he no there for, for me. As most people probably who listen to this show know, I'm more of an LG person. And um, the other part of the story is that LG is coming up with uh, with a, 
are designed for an attached second screen. Right. So yeah. So the new um, LG G8 phone, right, is coming is May. They say they may have an attachable second screen. Right. Um, How's that going to work? Well, apparently the second screen will be an uh, an optional attachment, like a like like in a case um, that will be designed to extend the screen size of the actual device. Um, it's not you know, immediately clear on how it would work or if it would be included in any purchases um, or if it's going to be sold as an accessory. Mm. But LG is expected to show off the device next month at the annual mobile. World Conference Expo in Barcelona, so I'd be eager to see what that looks like. I guess it's like as much as you, as much as I try. How hard is it? You know, if you want to try and do certain things, these for me anyway. Like, and you're used to operating with two screens, and you, you go away and try and do something just on your laptop. Well, it depends what you're doing. Like, if you're trying to say update web pages and all this, and you you know you got reference on one screen, blah blah blah. blah. But how, you you notice it. Like, I think two screens is a must. I can't see how. And as you get down to a small screen like an iPhone or, or a phone, like I think they're too small. Why, why would you have a second screen so you can play? Um, what was that game that had the, the little the little uh, toy games that came know. out? Donkey I, I Kong guess, with a split I guess screen. You won't actually know until you actually start using one. I mean, I mean, I'm just looking at the what Alan's saying here, and he's saying that the, there's an issue with the the Android on the on the tablets that. Um, that the interface is unsupported by most of the apps, and I and I have to agree with him on that because I actually use an Android uh, tablet, and a lot of the times um, the apps are not designed well. I mean, you can either you can flip them in landscape or in in um, vertical mode, yeah, and and they should theoretically automatically adjust to your which way you flip the the, the um, the Just, tablet, yes. But there are ones, and 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 uh, Instagram is a classic, right? That one there. If you're using the Instagram app, yeah, um, it won't flip over to landscape. You have yeah, to use oh, it. Oh yes, I hate that. That's that yeah. annoys me to no end. Mm, yep. Yeah. yeah, the the dual screen thing I was thinking about was one of the, one of those, one of those Donkey Kong. Ah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember those? <laughs> oh, they're reinventing the wheel. These LG mob. Yeah, all right. Um, you're into your phones, Joe, aren't you? Into your phones and mo- and your mobile gadgetry. I like that's all good. sorts of gadgets. Yeah, that's good. Uh, what did you get? The gadgets over Christmas? Anything to uh, play with? I, I didn't get any myself, but I, I quietly got one for the missus. Oh yes. Uh, yeah, I got her one of those Google um, Home Hubs. It was for the one with the screen. It was for you, really, wasn't it? <laughs> hey, it was for you, really. No, no, it's actually for her. Yeah. Um, and um, are you allowed to talk to it? You know what? It's still in the box. <laughs> and it hasn't even been opened yet. So, right. if it was for me, it would have been opened by now. <laughs> well, do do her a favour. Say, I'll open it for you, love. Uh, she says she wants to put it in the kitchen. So, um, the kitchen hasn't been co- uh, completed yet. We're working on building a new kitchen. Right, right. Um, and uh, she wants to use it in the kitchen. Well, you should. So, you should. Okay. Wait. There you go. You should whack that thing open, Joe. It might not work. It might be broken. You might have to send it back. <laughs> Tear it open. Tear it Talk, up. Talking about um, kitchen stuff, um, I might just go to my next story if you don't mind. Go ahead. Okay, so who whose mum's got a whirlpool? Everyone used to have one. Yes. Apparently now our whirlpool has announced four new Google Assistant integrated products. Oh. It's funny when I read that story. When I read that you had that in the show notes, I yeah. thought it said, "Well, Whirlpool announces four new Google Assistant products," I, and I just went, "Hmm, really?" <laughs> like this because I thought it was the Whirlpool website. I'm thinking, "What are they doing announcing stuff?" Yeah, so- <laughs> no, this is this is the appliances. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, tech followers everywhere are predicting that 2019 will be the year of the assisted products, and in particular, Google and Alexa. Uh, assisted products and apparently this year at CES Whirlpool and its sub brands um, one's called W Labs and the other one's called Kitchen Aid have announced four new products with Google Assistant integration in them oh nice yeah the first one um, they call it the, 
the Kitchen Aid Smart Display. The other one is called the Kitchen Aid Connected Range. And the other one is called W Labs Smart Countertop Oven. And the Whirlpool also coming up with, with a smart all in one washer and dryer. Oh, wow. All in one washer and dryer. That sounds all right. That's right. So the, 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 the Kitchen Aid Smart Display. It's a, uh, it features all of the Google Assistant's functionality, um, like the entertainment from music, podcasts, radio, YouTube, Hulu, blah, 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 all the rest of it. But the other good thing about it, it comes with a step-by-step -step recipe instructions. Um, it comes with shopping lists, and it comes also with smart home control. Right. Yeah, things are just taken off, aren't they? With yeah. all this IoT and, and all yeah. this sort of stuff. Everything's just connected to the internet. Just yeah. It's... And, and the good thing about this one here is that um, there's a, um, a, a an app they call Yumly. I think mm. that's how you say it. Right. Y U W M L Y. Um, and that app is actually on the KitchenAid smart display. And for those that don't know, Yumly is a personalized food discovery app um, available on iOS, Android, and on web browsers. Uh, it allows users to browse photographed, uh, easy to follow recipes, and um, the actual app is owned by the Whirlpool itself. Oh, right. So they put it out? They've put it out. Yeah, and they, and they um, own the yum. I haven't had a chance to look at it personally, um, but I'm, I'm guessing this will be one of the apps that I'd be installing on that hub, Google Hub. So I wonder, so can you use this app uh, with, without the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it works on Android, it works on um, iOS, it works on the web browsers. It has, a, uh, has some good reviews, if you, if you go by reviews. It's uh, 62,000 ratings and oh, three, oh, more than three quarters. You'd have to say, I don't know, probably eight ninths is, uh, or nine tenths or five stars. I mean, you know, this is good. something that I think a lot of women have been waiting for, to have in the kitchen, something... I mean, you, you'll probably get a similar scenario with the fridge. You know how some people have it on the fridge. Well, apparently Whirlpool have made these smart displays. It's a 10-inch smart display. Mm. Uh, it's got a rating of IPX5, so um, it's resisted to some um, water a little bit. You know, that's one of the things here I've just been reading through the, the uh, 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 features is what's in your fridge. Discover recipes to make right now with what you have on hand. Simply any of the ingredients you wish to use. Because I know we, we throw so much food out. I hate it. I hate throwing the food out. I'm always blowing up about it. Uh, and, you know, like, why can't, yeah, like, why can't we, I might download this app and then say, come, say, last day of the week or whatever, or instead of just, you know, going to the shops and buying new stuff for tea or whatever, just say, well, okay, I've got this, 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 and this in the fridge. Put in the app and see what it says. Well, that's right. I mean, that's... and 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 it should come up with something, you know. I mean, it also gives you... Um, how you're going to cook it and what it's going to look like and yeah i mean it's it's worth a try apparently, apparently there's no official word as to when the smart display will launch um but the website the android police uh report that it's likely to go on sale on the second half of 2019 right somewhere between 200 and 300 dollars for this particular and, one and you can get it on the android as well as the itunes I'd that's right you get on an uh, ios android um, and um, web browsers. Oh, I'd be opening that box this weekend, Joe. Get that on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, okay, uh, have you finished with that one? Uh, that's done there, yeah. Now, the other one that they've got is the called the Kitchen Aid, uh, which is a connected commercial style range and it combines an oven and a stove. Yes. Uh, it's also said um, to be eventually support Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. And what's um, it going to do for us? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it, apparently it's going to be so like to control um, the appliance remotely with simple commands from another room, like um, um, is there any, um, any, any, any time left on the thing? How long before this, it's cooked? What is right. the temperature? Um, you, can, you can readjust the temperature. Uh, it, it's connected in such a way that you can then view it on the app. I think there's like a little camera set up inside there that you can view it on the app. That's, um, yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? So you could be you could be down the pub, 
And you go, oh, I'll, I'll have that pie when I get home. You go, ting, 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 ting on your phone. Oven starts at home. And then you go, ting, 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 have a look at it. And go, oh, yeah, the top of that pie is just bubbling. I can see little air pockets popping up through the top of that pie. It's time to go. Go home and have your pie. That that's, sounds like the way to go. That's great. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And the last one that I was going to talk about is the all-in-one washer and dryer. Yes, yes, another goodie. Yeah, so that one now allows you to load to be completely washed and dried on one machine, as you were saying before. Now, the interesting thing about this um, particular unit is that it's ventless, right? So it's got no vent at the back, right. or on the side, or on the top, or on the bottom. Yeah. And so Whirlpool says it uh, will fit a variety of places, including under the kitchen counter, in closets. So I wonder what uh, it does to disperse its heat, or, or does it have to disperse its heat? I don't know. I mean, I'd, I'd really like to know how that works. I mean, the, the, you see them a lot in, like, in some bathrooms where they've got the uh, exhaust fans from a shower. It's a very similar scenario, but I don't know how that works. Hmm. Maybe put your oven on top of it or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. It could work like with the old refrigerators when the water pours out of the refrigerator, it yeah, goes it into evaporates. like a, a tray, mm. it gets heated up, and then evaporates. I'm guessing something like that. Mm. Yeah, you know, it... yeah. There's so many good things coming out. Like that's awesome, isn't it? Like that's uh, it, it's yeah, IoT devices and what they can do for you. I love it. That is, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I love that app, that food app. I want to get that. Yeah, um, grab that. I mean, that that that'll be good. Your missus will love it, and. Um, You'll be able to do a lot of heap, a lot of stuff with that. Well, I haven't got a home. I mean, well, she hasn't got a home pod yet. I might have to get her one too, Joe. <laughs> but you've got a tablet, haven't you, of some sort, whether it's yes. an Android one or an, an iOS one? Yeah. Actually, I've got an old iPad too. I wonder if it'll work on that. I'll, I'll boot that up uh, and see what happens. Uh, all right. Uh, look, just a couple of quickies just to finish off. Uh, Microsoft. I've got a Microsoft story. Uh, as uh, Microsoft Australia, Microsoft Australia has smashed through a two billion dollar milestone. Uh, it's a two billion dollar revenue milestone by more than doubling its sales and profit uh, from last year. So two point two eight billion in the financial year ending thirtieth of June two thousand and eighteen. Just in case you're wondering that they were scraping the bottom of the barrel, uh, a massive jump from one point one three billion in two thousand and seventeen. So yes, they they are going crazy. Uh, I think they. I'm not sure what products are, or what are making them all the cash because, you know, some of the products they sell, the revenue goes overseas because that's just how it's all sort of negotiated with partners and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it does say here, this article, that the most recent financial year saw Microsoft pay $175 million in income tax, uh, though the company only incurred a $53 million in income tax expenses over the year. I don't know how that works. But anyway, Microsoft Australia noted that after the 2018 financial year ended, they adopted a new accounting standard, so requiring its 2007 results to be restated. So the revenue from 2017 was restated from 1.05 to 1.13 billion. I, I don't get the, what why I, I put that in <laughs> because I don't get how you can restate your revenue because you've adopted a new accounting standard. Isn't there just like a, a, a tax office standard like so how can you just restate it so that you move to different standards what pick a standard and that's the one you go with on sounds a bit crazy to me every kid know that you should be on the show uh but anyway microsoft australia employs 1404 staff as of june 2018 so look microsoft are going good but we're talking about money tim cook uh sees a pay increase of four million dollars in 2018 just in case you were wondering, he was, you know, sleeping outside under the stars. He's not. He's reported compensation. Look, I'll go through this because just, I don't know, they, this must be in the uh, Apple's prospectus or something. This is just interest, you know, interest sake. Uh, Cook reported total compensation of $15.7 million. That's US dollars. That works out to be about $21.87 million uh, in the fiscal 2018. And that's up $2.9 million uh, from his 12.8. He received the previous year. Uh, his pay includes three million in base salary. Uh, he also receives twelve million in non-equity incentive plan comp compensation, six hundred eighty-two thousand in other compensation. I wonder what that's for. Uh, not included as part of his total, not included as part of total pay, 
uh, is his shares. So his shares are worth an estimated 121 million. Other compensation includes Apple contributions to his superannuation, 16,500. I don't know if that's a year or whatever, but anyway. Uh, what else? Vacation cash out in the amount of 57,000. Security expenses in the amount of 310000 Must have a wall around his house or something. And personal air travel expenses worth 294000 How can you have personal air travel expense? Where the hell does he go? And why isn't he working? He must be travelling first class all the time. Yeah, but why isn't he working? 200 <laughs> 200 and, What was it? 200 and... Oh, I've lost it. Uh, security expenses, travel expenses, two hundred ninety-four thousand. That's mad. Uh, anyway, Apple stock closed up one point nine percent Tuesday with a total market cap of seven hundred fifteen billion. So, look, I think Apple's looks like they might be, you know, starting to. Uh, uh, I don't know, trudge a Drop, hard road. Dropping the ball a little bit, you reckon? Yeah, well, I think they're having problems in China, and uh, yeah, iPhone sales are down, and. Uh, Kogan's got problems selling these iPhones. So, you know, things are looking bad for old Tim. But I think, uh, look, my next story sort of tells you what where they're obviously trying to, would you say, re remake themselves or re maybe not redefine themselves, but they're looking for other avenues. And one of the other avenues is it looks like they've been talking about their own streaming service and it looks like that's going to launch. Uh, speculation is that'll launch this year sometime. So... One, it's been announced that one film that they're going to... They've spent like a billion dollars on uh, their own content. Uh, one of the films that they're going to make is uh, Sofia Coppola is going to direct a Bill Murray film. So that should be exciting. Uh, I'll tell you about another exciting thing, just right off track. How good is Bohemian Rhapsody? I went and saw it twice over the break. I, I haven't love seen it. it yet. I've got to go and see it. Oh, go and see it before it finishes at the cinema. Like If you don't see it at the cinema, Joe, you... You miss out, unless you got it. Yeah, I know. I've, you've got to see it at the cinema. I haven't seen it yet. I might make a a, a thing of it this weekend. Yeah. Try and go this weekend. Look, I was sort of look. I like Queen, but I wasn't. I was before I saw it. I went, oh yeah, well, Queen movie. Yeah, I'll wait until I watch it on the TV. But you know, I went and saw it at the cinema, and I went back again. It was just it, oh, fantastic. So do yourself a favor, go and see it. Uh, but anyway, uh, Bill Murray's film, the Rashida Jones will star with Bill Murray in the film. Tell, tells a story apparently of a young mother who reconnects with her playboy father. Uh, and Apple is also working with Jennifer Aniston, Steven Spielberg, Reese Witherspoon on some TV projects. Um, yeah, so that's what they're doing. I don't know if we if the world needs another streaming service. Like, how many do we want? Like, you know, we've got Disney getting their own out. That we've got over here. We've got Stan. Netflix. I saw is raising prices in the US as well. So yeah, get ready for that to come out over here. Um, so you've got Stan, Netflix, uh, you know, you got Foxtel, got their streaming app as well, the Foxtel Go or Now, whatever it is. Maybe Fox, TV. Foxtel Now Go. Uh, yeah, you've got the KO Sports, which is backed by Foxtel, or which is Foxtel, just sports related. Yeah, it's, there's so many of them. You've got to spend 100 bucks a month just in streaming services. And uh, look, the last story for this week. Have you finished your stories, Joe? Yeah, I have, yeah. All right. Um, did you have any comments on the Apple? Sorry, I don't I just talking away, but you got any comments on the Apple streaming service or anything like that? Look, I think that they're working on something in the background. Um, Cars, AI. Just because Apple is quiet doesn't necessarily mean they're not being innovative. Um, they're, they're, they're probably doing a lot of things that are going to be, you know, coming all at once. Left field because they're going to probably a lot of things to do with the health industry. Yep. Um, yeah, good point. They're probably looking also into some things like um, virtual reality or argumentative reality. Mm. Arg um, oh, argumentative. Come back when you least expect it. <laughs> don't underestimate them. Yeah, oh, give me some of that argumentative reality. <laughs> uh, all right, now my last story is about. I think we we might have spoke about this last year sometime or whenever it happened. But remember, there was a guy in China who decided he was poor. Poor bloke, you know, that's that's sad. But anyway, he wanted an iPad. So when you're dirt poor and you can't afford an iPad, what do you do? Well, you sell your kidney. So a Chinese man sold his kidney for an iPad. He got $4,500 for his kidney. Uh, and now he's bedridden for life. 
So he sold his right kidney to the black market. Uh, he's, he was 17 year, years old when he did that. Shortly after the illegal surgery, he began suffering from a decreased level of kidney function. Eight years on, he's in bed. Um, organ failure. So he, he sold his kidney uh, in April 2011, received 4500 purchased an iPhone 4 and an iPad 2. wonder how they're going for you now, mate. Uh, mm. At the time, why do I need a second kidney? One is enough. Sounds good, you know. Sounds like a good title for a show. One is enough. But yeah, anyway, look, like, I don't know. I wouldn't be doing stuff like that. That's just crazy. Like he, obviously, how old was he? Did I say uh, seventeen? He should have known better. Like nine people were arrested in connection with the case, and five, including s- surgeons, uh, that jailed in two thousand and twelve. His family eventually received uh, three hundred thousand in compensation. But I mean. I don't know where where did this fail? What what? Why did this kid? Is this like is this a failure of the parents? Well, they didn't know anything about it, but uh, dude, I suppose teenager he probably just wanted his iPad. But it's terrible, it's terrible. What, you know, that's that's no good at all. But yeah, but sorry yeah, to end this. Would he, would, he, would he be legally allowed to have that sort of a procedure? No, no, it was totally illegal. The the people who did the procedure in jail. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, so nine people were arrested in connection with the case, and five, including the surgeons who harvested the, harvested the kidney, uh, jailed in, in 2012. Poor bastard. That's no good at all. Sorry to end on a, such, a, such a sad note, everyone. But, um, yeah. I mean, there's, a, there's that, and there's also those other ones where you don't hear about where you know, kids or even people go missing, and there's an underground mm. um, thing happening where, you know, body parts and so forth but we yeah. won't get into that nah but anyway like to, to end the show on a, on a high note yes bohemian rhapsody that's good it might not be as uh factual as, as what you as what it's uh it's probably not made out to be that factual but i've been watching a lot of stuff because you know once because i liked it that much as i said i went and saw it twice i liked it that much i've been watching a lot of stuff about it like you know the the timelines of the actual queen and what actually happened and all that sort of stuff and it's very interesting it's um he certainly freddie was certainly a talent and uh, just, you know, you just sat there, you sit there and you think of the just the, the different and the many songs that came on. You think, oh, yeah, that's right, Queen, 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 Queen. You think, geez, they had some great songs and all very uh, iconic songs and very uh, distinguishable from the first, you know, opening bar of the song, whether it be the piano or the, the guitar riff or whatever. It's an iconic, yeah. Uh, recognisable songs. It was really good. I, I, if you haven't seen it, go and do it. I highly recommend it. And take your kids. I took it, our kids. Now, just just quietly. I don't know what. I don't know if this happened on the show. And I, I'm I'm pointing my finger at you, Jordan. I think you told me that there it wasn't suitable for children, and uh, because of some um, homosexual acts being performed. But I didn't see any of those. <laughs> so it's it's safe for children. If you're worried about that that rumor that was going around, it's safe for children. All right, um, good stuff, Joe. Thanks for thanks for coming in. Good to see you. No worries. It's good to be on. Yeah, so we'll we'll see you again next week. Uh, I think so. Yes, absolutely. You should be fine next week. All right, cool. I think uh, hopefully Jordan is away on holidays up the sunny coast, apparently. So hopefully he'll be back next week, and we'll we'll have the gang back together. So uh, yeah, so thanks for joining us. I hope the Facebook feed went all right. Uh, just before you you pop out of the Facebook, just let put a comment in and let us know. Um, I, I'll go through Who, who's in the Facebook tonight. Just before we go, so we'll acknowledge acknowledge the live viewers. Uh, Tim, Alan, Chris, uh, to name but a few. Pete, good stuff. Good stuff, you guys. Um, yeah, what's uh, what are they? What are you all talking about? Uh, blah blah blah. Yeah, Tim says blame Jerry Harvey for the GST. Yeah, that's right. He had a big sook about it, didn't he? That's uh, that's exactly right. Uh, Jerry missed. Chris says Jerry missed the boat when everyone else was uh, online taking a while. For, yes, that's right. Yes, uh, Chris, you're exactly right. He, yeah, he funny just, that because he's actually trading online now too, isn't he? Yeah, and I remember his page used to be pus too. He, he took him a while to get to get with it. Uh, Pete, uh, yeah, AliExpress is now GST. Uh, Flea Bay adds the GST. Uh, says Chris, uh, uh, Tim. When we moved on to the three six five, uh, three six five went eight up eight percent. Business essential is now seven fifty nine. Aussie used to be seven dollars and four. Yeah, that's right, Tim. Good on you. I remember you told that. You said that to me. I forgot. 
Uh, Pete, still much cheaper than hosting your own mails. Yes, yes, we went through that one. Uh, uh, Tim, IMAP I, and POP is dead. 2019, dealing with businesses, you guys need to implement 365G Suite solutions for increased security. MFA. Yes, uh, multi-factor authentication, I guess. Uh, Alan, the issue with the, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then, then I think we mentioned most of the other ones. So good stuff. Good on you. It's like a little episode of Romper Room. I love it. All right. Thanks, Joe. We'll see you next week. And we'll see uh, everyone out there in Facebook land as well. And if you see us on the YouTube or on the audio, thanks for listening. And we're back, 2019. We'll see you soon. Bye for now. All right. See you.